This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Saturday Morning Mysteries, our favorite podcast, and hopefully yours too, where we are your hosts. I'm Alexis. I'm Grace. And we are back to do our thing of telling true crime comedy tales based on classic animated cartoon shows. Mm -hmm. If you have been sticking with us, you know that we have moved on to an arc of courage, the cowardly dog. It's been a fun two weeks so far talking Mm -hmm. about this show and reliving the memories that we had watching it growing up. And today, week three. Grace is on deck to be our storyteller. So Grace, I'm going to hand it over to you unless there's any business that I am probably forgetting to tell the lovely people nope. out there. But I think I'm also probably forgetting any business. Cool. So let's just uh, jump right like, into it. Comment, share, oh, yeah. subscribe, follow us on social media at yep. Sat More and Miss, all those things if you dare. That, yes. No, just do it whether you're there or not. Anyway, (laughs) take it away, Grace. (laughs) Great. Well, um, I, Alexis, I'm going to tell you, and of course, our lovely listeners and viewers, uh, about an episode of Courage that features one of my all-time favorite recurring characters on the show Mm -hmm. that when I saw the, you know, like the image of her, like the preview on HBO Max, I was like, this is the one that I was like, I need to get to all of her episodes before Alexis does, damn it. <laughs> yeah. um, and said character is Shirley the Medium. Oh, we'll man. Oh, okay. Cool. Yes. So, yeah. nice. uh, yeah, so I will remind you of who she is. Um, and this is also the name of the episode I'm covering, which is simply called Shirley the Medium, which is from season one, episode four B. So the second part of the fourth episode of season mm-hmm. one. Um, before we get into the episode and Shirley's eventual role in it, let's get into who Shirley is. Mm -hmm. So Shirley, the medium is like a neon green chihuahua (laughs) who's like maybe subtly Mexican accent, which I will not be impersonating like we did our last episode. We're yes. not going to go there. Yeah. Um, we she have ha- our line. Uh, exactly. A clear line that yep. will be crossing it. Yeah. She has like huge bulging eyes like chihuahuas do, like how chihuahuas' eyes are always like sticking out of their heads. Um, <laughs> Shirley's definitely also on like way too big for her tiny little body, um, which like her breed, she is very small and like. Like Courage, she walks on her hind feet, Um, but unlike Courage, she is a dog who humans can understand. So throughout the Courage universe, it's like, it's a mixture. There's no real rules around what humans can, or what animals humans can understand. And this is one that they can. Um, She's got a bunch of gold earrings. She wears uh, like a navy blue, like bandana slash headscarf and like this draping magenta cloak. Uh, She lives in just like a wagon on some other side of nowhere and makes her living, as her title suggests, as a medium. So Shirley has some type of special connection with like the mystical world of the Courage universe. She can bestow curses on people. She can sometimes kind of see the past and the future. And importantly for our episode, she can also commune with the dead. Mm -hmm. so not Mm -hmm. much is known about Shirley's actual past and I actually love her so much and I love like the mystery of her that I'm not gonna wild wildly speculate about Mm -hmm. Shirley we'll get to wild speculation this episode but not about her um again yeah I like her like mysterious sense like the question of like what the f happened to her in her past that got her to this point and also what created her set of I don't necessarily know if I want to call them like morals, but like standards of business, maybe. Uh, Yeah. Which is really one rule that she lives by, which is you can't use her powers for personal gain, especially when communing with the dead or, you know, yeah, using any of her powers or else terrible consequences will come your way. Mm -hmm. And again, pretty mysterious and ominous and foreboding so like what the fuck happened to you in the past surely that made you realize this (laughs) she's like oh no no more for that Mm -hmm. not again (laughs) not again yes so 
with that He's ominous too. Mm-hmm. With that mm-hmm. ominous warning, we come to our favorite farm in Nowhere, Kansas, where we are having a birthday. Aww. However, it's not Muriel's birthday. It's not Courage's birthday, and it's not Eustace's birthday, oh. or even Shirley's. Nope, hmm. it is Horst's birthday. Now, a horse, <laughs> <laughs> a horse, a horse, O R S T, horse. It's oh, hard to say, like it. the possessive of horse, horse. Horse did it. Yeah, horse-ed. apostrophe s. Gotcha. It is the birthday of horse. And now. Who is Horst, you may ask, because I was yeah. also asking that. Yeah. Start of this episode. Um, Horst, which I also like, I just can't get over like what a weird name Horst is. Yeah. And it, like, Horst. just very weird and hard to say for some reason. That S and T is just, I, I don't love it, but I'm going to say it a lot this episode. So, okay. I'm sorry. So, de- deal with it, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I didn't write it. <laughs> okay. I didn't mean it. this character. <laughs> Um, so Horst is a like big chinned bald. He's got like these like almost like cool hip, like perfectly round sunglasses explorer. And from the get go, okay. Horst, and this is a little mixture of wild speculation right now and bringing in what I, what I do know about said Horst, um, from the get go, Horst was always, is always at the top of his class and game. He grew up a very skilled hunter and marksman, and he's always been very curious and hungry for bigger game and harder animals to conquer. Mm. And he was always interested in just that general sense of a bigger and larger challenge. And he was always had a sense of curiosity, but not a curiosity in the sense of like, oh, let me get this next mark because I'm interested in learning about this new animal or this new place that the animal lives in. But instead, just about getting new things, trying to conquer things. Mm -hmm. Um, And this hunger was insatiable. He used his hunting prowess and competitions to start earning enough money to travel and to get out of the small town that he grew up in, where everything was easily within his grasp. And there was really no challenge for him there. So again, started to earn this money through hunting competitions, I think, in order to go on to the next biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, And this small town that he grew up in, by the way, was nowhere Mm -hmm. and not just anywhere, nowhere, but actually right at the same farm that Eustace and Muriel and Courage currently live in. Mm -hmm. And he grew up there because that was his family's home, as well as Eustace's family home, family's home, because Eustace and Horst are brothers Ah. or rather they were brothers because Horst is dead. So, yes, as Horst brought more money in while he was growing up, again, he fled nowhere as soon as he could, once he kind of conquered all of the animals and things that he could get in nowhere. And he started taking his expeditions, his hunting expeditions, to all corners of the earth. And as he was doing that, he started getting an interest in just generally exploring Um And I say all corners of the earth. And by that, I mean corners of the earth that he believed had been untouched by humans. Though many of these places, yes, were Mm -hmm. obviously already touched by humans. So while Horst and much of the world called him a great explorer, we can maybe call him a little bit of a colonizer. (laughs) Definitely going into places that people already were, Uh, taking things for himself. The whole uh, family, his whole family's got issues. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, and now obviously there's nothing wrong with like a responsible hunter or a respectful observer of another culture Absolutely. and peoples, but Horst was na- neither of those things. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe that not only did he try to get his hands on the treasures that many thought were lost, again, he'd go to these remote corners of the world originally for hunting, learn about some legend that was there and decide, well, I'm already here. I might as well go take it. Like mm-hmm. I'll call it exploring. I'll make a map and say it's I was exploring now. the area. Great. <laughs> and if I happen to, you know, hunt or what I think was actually the source of all of his riches, poach, 
an animal or two while I'm here. Meh. Another one will be born. Yeah, say la vie. You'll yeah. earn some money some other way. Another <laughs> animal will be born. Eh. Yeah. I'll get on the cover of Nat Geo as the great explorer holding exactly. like some rare jaguar or something like that. <laughs> um, yes. Glorify so, this man. <laughs> yeah. So it's unclear exactly how Horst died, although it is assumed that it was on one of his like explorations and some accident happened. Mm-hmm. Um and said again, accident or ex- explore explorations, air quotations. <clears throat> yes, exactly. <clears throat> Poaching expeditions, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, brought him to far off exotic places, um, which I don't think is actually that wild of speculation, including my like poaching belief about him, Mm -hmm. uh, because we do see a picture of him in the farmhouse in present day where he, again, is like an explorer's outfit and he's holding some type of like purple squid octopus thing around him that he definitely would have poached in like the middle of a jungle or yeah, something. Yeah, I was say they're in like the middle of the desert. So he yeah, he yep. definitely took that from somewhere. He yep, should exactly. Not <laughs> yeah. He took that from somewhere he shouldn't have. I think he yeah, got his hands in a lot of uh jars that he wasn't supposed to have his hands in and yeah. uh just in generally was pretty pretty careless um mm-hmm. with what he wanted and he just went ahead and took it. Again, mm-hmm. all under the name of "quote unquote" exploration. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you can both assume, and as we've learned from other episodes and shows, such as Scooby Doo and the Curse of the Aztec Ghost, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, things like poaching, desecrating ruins, colonization, et cetera, et cetera, can bring all types of you know bad luck. Bad voodoo, bad, bad juju, bad juju. vibes, bad curses. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. All of the bad shit, basically. Yeah. Uh, upon, karma. Yeah, yeah. karma <laughs> upon said uh, explorer, colonizer. Yeah, curse breaker, cur- uh, accursed. <laughs> yeah, accursed. Yeah, accursed human being, <laughs> yeah. Um, curiosity who killed the cat, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Bad human being, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, And so it becomes obvious, kind of from the get-go of this episode, that Horst and Eustace had a very bad relationship growing up. Mm. But not because Eustace had some moral problem with Horst's, like, illegal poaching or colonization activities. Instead, it was a relationship really just based on envy and jealousy because Horst grew very, very, very rich with all of his illegal activities And Eustace both resented that while he was alive. You know, he was never good at, Eustace was never good at things he did. Mm. Horse never brought him along on these adventures. Instead, Horse just grew in glory, quote unquote, or infamy, baby. Yeah. And grew steadily richer and Eustace just stayed at the farm. So a lot of jealousy there. But I think that this resentment uh, and jealousy actually grew to hatred when Horst died. Again, not because of some moral high ground. I think Eustace grew to hate Horst when he died simply because, and you, you, Eustace kind of says this, because Horst never shared his treasures and riches with Eustace. Oh my God. Um, he was not in the will. Uh supposedly Horst had buried some of his treasure somewhere and mm-hmm. just didn't tell Eustace about it. And so Eustace is just fucking pissed. That Isn't that brother... kind of like a catch 22 though? It's like, he didn't, he probably didn't tell you about this stuff or put you in the will because you treated him like shit or because mm-hmm. like you two <laughs> fought we, a lot. Like maybe if you slept up to him a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say if there's one thing we know about Eustace that he doesn't really have a lot of like care for how he treats others true not, he maybe only cares about how they treat him yep mm-hmm. personality Quite and uh, it's never i think eustace is one of those again like narcissism nurses it's never his fault why yes. are people treating him right. the way he i'm alive i am genetically his brother so, so I, I deserve, deserve <laughs> i deserve it all of your riches okay also, <laughs> give them yes. also do like do we see Horst at any point? Like, what does he look like? Do we yes. know? Or, yeah. or, or maybe you'll get to that later. No, nope. I'm just yeah, very so, 
curious and if he looks just like Eustace or if he's like way more handsome or something. So it's very funny. So we do see that one picture of him. Hilariously, one, he does seem bald, but he has like a a safari hat on. Mm -hmm. But he and he's got like the big protruding chin. But instead of like, I don't know, Eustace's is almost like a like waggling big old chin. Horse is definitely like the strong job oh, and yeah. he's got like the big like you only see him like waist up type of thing but like clearly like he goes to the gym you know yeah. like he's got like kind of a big figure like muscular figure again he's whole he's like draped around him these like tentacles of this beast that he poached yeah rescued wow. people from poached yeah. i think for oh. whatever glory he thought he'd get yeah on the poaching trophy black hunting. market yeah exactly trophy hunting um again like kind of like the cool hip spectacle so he definitely has like you can tell in the photo that they are related but you can also tell that it'd be like if they he's both, like the more interesting yes like, if they both yeah. like walked into a bar everyone would ignore eustace and like have him go get drinks and they would all only talk to horse and yeah. be like tell us wow. more about your adventures yeah strong man so yeah there's another definitely reason why eustace was shitty to him probably exactly without mm-hmm. a doubt yes yeah. um so uh as we get into this episode it's like a little funky because there's no like blatant crime that we see but i just really liked this episode so i decided to do it um but maybe i posit that the crime is uh of greed a crime of a past life and specifically horse's past life okay. coming back to the present day to haunt uh haunt those who still remain uh, uh more or less haunted crimes we told people that's what uh-huh. these shows you're going to be about a lot of haunting, we warned them a lot of yep. spooky spookiness exactly. and crimes <laughs> yes and so with that rewarding statement uh we return to the birthday uh mm-hmm. and muriel reminding eustace that it's horse birthday today um and while eustace grumbles about how much he hates his brother how he's good for nothing because he buried that box of treasure without telling him where it was. Uh, Muriel, who I realized, kind of had a feeling, but kind of realized in this episode that she is like perf- a professional at like turning a blind eye to things she doesn't want to see because oh. she like tisks at this like shit talking on her brother-in-law and clearly had like a great relationship with Horst and was just like don't talk about your brother like that like oh I miss him so much so like I don't know maybe like Horst would send Muriel some nice things with his riches because she wasn't horrible to him but like yeah she clearly didn't ask questions about where that money came from I think she was just, I'm right oh. she's like oh he was so great he was like, so yeah. lovely he's so naive yes mm. Mm -hmm. Um, And courage for his part while this is all happening was out digging in the backyard looking for his yo-yo, apparently. It's very cute. Um, Mm -hmm. When he just so happens to come across a box, a locked box. Oh. So he brings it inside to Muriel and Eustace who are watching TV, you know, clearly putting aside the brother's birthday thing. Um, (laughs) And yeah, they just turned on the TV. It was easy to talk Muriel out of that. Yeah. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to celebrate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Let's turn uh, the TV back so on. Nice, doop, yeah. Doop, doop. yeah, she's reminiscing cool. about the good times and like maybe vacations horsed and like horse wife would bring Mary along but leave Eustace behind because Eustace sucked or something like that. <laughs> um, and yeah, Courage brings in the box being like, uh, I did not bury this here with my mm-hmm. yo-yo, which by the way, where's my yo-yo, y'all? What is this box doing in my in hole? Box. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and so to no surprise, Eustace immediately recognizes it as the box. Mm-hmm. The box, and it's not like a treasure chest, it's literally like a box that could like fit on a little desk with like, like a, a cardboard lock. box or like yeah, kind of, yeah, I mean, maybe like nicer than a cardboard box, but like yeah. it's got like a little like lock on it oh okay a yeah. lock box or something okay yeah gotcha. exactly yeah like a safety deposit box but i not, would even say <laughs> but not <laughs> but like but not in the like crate yeah <laughs> not like anything big cool um but you eustace does recognize it as the box horse box of treasures and immediately rips it away from courage who's like the fuck what are you doing and starts trying to pry it open but for all of his attempts 
It just won't budge. He's mm-hmm. trying to like use like a crowbar to get it open. He's trying to like pick the lock on it. And of course, Eustace gets, gets pissed, starts yelling about how, of course, his brother would leave the box in his own backyard, but without a key, because of course he would do something like that to Eustace, because he always hated Eustace. What blah, did blah, I blah, do blah, to blah. deserve this? Exactly. <laughs> like, of course, everyone's against me type of shit. Yeah. Um, and Courage, uh, like, while Eustace is moaning and growing, uh, Courage is like, what the fuck is in here anyways? And peeps mm-hmm. into the keyhole. I just wanted to see what, like, the fuss is about. Like, why is Eustace so up in arms? Yeah. About some random box. And is met with very ominous, ghoulish, like, moaning and screaming and so courage is immediately like we should not open this box (laughs) like let's bury this shit again Uh uh-uh humans please listen yeah excuse me excuse me over here yeah uh bad 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 but of course every time courage tries to grab it eustace pulls it away because it's Mm -hmm. now to eustace his box damn it um and all the while while these shenanigans are happening Meryl's just still watching TV. Um, <laughs> and, you know, she's just chilling. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah they're going to, they're doing whatever they're they doing. They fight. Those yeah, silly boys. Time for this shit. <laughs> um, and that's where she actually sees a commercial on, funny enough, the channeling channel is what it was called, um, as in channeling some greater powers. Yeah. She sees a commercial for Shirley the Medium who mm. in her infomercial essentially talks about all of her different skills, including contacting and communing with the dead. So mm. boom, problem solved. Yes. We can just call Shirley, who can call our dead brother, Horst. We can get the key. And then Muriel points out, and we can wish him a happy birthday. It's his birthday. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? It's a win, win, win. Bam. Well, I guess except for courage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Win, 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 lose. Lose. <laughs> for courage. Win, win. You're about to get cursed. <laughs> <laughs> bam, bam. Yes. <laughs> um, so they call up Shirley and she shuffles on over to the house. Oh. Um, and again, uh, courage this whole time is just like, we don't want her, you know, Shirley shows up and he's like, this is bad. Please don't do this. And she's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah get out of here. Can she understand my business. him? Does um, it seem? I, I, it seems like he was doing his usual, like, okay. uh, doing a bunch of humans. motions. They couldn't like speak to each other. It was like, he was trying to speak to another human, even though okay. she's also a dog. Um, yeah. So at the kitchen table, uh, Shirley lays out ground rules in front of a crystal ball in the middle of the table, which again, the only ground rule is if you contact a dead person for personal gain, there will be tragic consequences. And Eustace ever the charmer yep, says, just dial my dead brother and shut up. It's literally <laughs> what he says to her. So she's Swoon. like, okay, yeah. Bitch. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, okay. they're all sitting there Muriel's just like doop 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 again yeah. ignoring Muriel, control your man yeah get them together <laughs> so originally I was just going to jump right into like how they eventually were able to contact Horst but multiple shenanigans happened during those atten- attempts I just want to tell you about them real quick okay. in a couple cool. lines nice. so one when Shirley contacts the dead again she's like this little like very disheveled or like not disheveled, like kind of wigged out looking because again, chihuahua eyes, <laughs> yeah. chihuahua. So when she contacts the dead, she just like goes into this like trance in which her head just like tilts back, her <laughs> eyes closed and her mouth just like gapes open and she's just like, <laughs> which was like very funny. Um, two, when she makes the, like the quote unquote call to Horst, it's like literally like she is a phone and she gets like the busy dial tone. <laughs> Because it's just like a phone call to the dead somehow. <laughs> on another, on the third attempt, um, because again, it's like literally, I guess, a phone call to the dead. And like her mouth is like wide open. Yeah, just like, <laughs> like the whole time and like the dead like speak through it the whole time. She's just like head tilted back, mouth open. Um, on another attempt, uh, Gertrude, who's apparently horse dead wife, picks up quote unquote the call and muriel and gertrude again horse wife who's also dead are like oh my god hey girl and they start (laughs) talking about like pie recipes 
<laughs> like, oh, are you putting vinegar in the pie? Oh yeah, for the blueberry pie. What's up? I miss you so much. And they're just like gabbing for a minute. They're just catching up. Um, and Eustace is pissed. Her mouth too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, literally the whole time she's just like unmoving, mouth open still. Oh, so um, I love this show so much. I'm yeah. sorry. They just, it's like the small things like that that they uh-huh. do. Yeah, exactly. So That's just funny. like quick catch up time. Eustace is pissed. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eustace is also like, this is bullshit. This is clearly not working. It's, um, it clearly is working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are like, talking about? It was literally just someone, it was his wife that picked his up instead wife. of him. Yeah. Um, I do want to say also. Dialed the wrong number. He just like isn't at their spirit home like, or whatever. In the shower like, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, back when he's free. <laughs> yeah exactly let them catch up for a second um and at another point uh as everyone's like starting to doubt her abilities she like taps into like her crystal ball really quick like snaps out of the chance and is like i'll show you that i know how to do shit and i only mention this because it's very cute she like, looks into their crystal ball and she's like courage your yo-yo's under the couch and he <sighs> goes and gets it and his tail's wagging and he's so excited because he found his yo-yo Aww. and he momentarily forgets about the very scary box but anyway, whatever it takes to take your mind off of things <laughs> yeah, for a minute, exactly. relax your mind, play with yes, your yo yo. Also, very kind of her to like go through yeah. all of. I'm sure it's like not super easy to like fall but into that exhausting. trance. <laughs> yeah, so like for her to do that real quick to be like, "Hey, yeah. courage, here you go, Help here you out. go." Also, look, mm-hmm. I am good at this shit. Yeah. Again, they were already talking to Gertrude, the dead wife. Yeah. But clearly. eventually, they do call back. Uh, I guess horse is out of the shower at this point. Um, and they get horse on the phone who immediately starts to fight with Eustace about the box and horse is like bro bury that shit again and forget about it forever there's nothing in there for you Eustace you were not supposed to find that shit put that box back Mm -hmm. but Eustace ever of course the greedy bastard keeps pushing him and pushing him and I assume both just disturbing horse's afterlife, which like I low key can only assume and hope is like in hell because he clearly like wasn't a great human being, right? Um, and maybe or maybe he's just like, yeah, he was about to watch you know the wheel with Gertrude, and so he wants to get back to that, or yeah. he's just like, you know what, fuck you, brother, I will tell you how to open this box because you mm. have always been a dick, and you know what, fine. Um, like, yeah, I'm not alive. I don't have to deal with whatever curse you're about to freaking unleash. <laughs> exactly. He's like, you know what? Fine. Yeah. Like you asked for it literally. And mm-hmm. so he tells you sis where the key is, which very interestingly. And I think this at some point would deserve, deserve some type of like psychological, like analysis that the key, it turns out was sewn into the lining of Eustace's own hat. So the brother, yes, somewhere deep down did have some type of love, I think, for Eustace in some weird, twisted way uh, in which he gave him the answer all along was just in your hat or also really hated Eustace and was like, yep, good luck. I'm going to fucking curse the shit out of you. Yeah. Or he was like, he thought Eustace would like die before him or something. Yeah. And he'd take the hat and be like, all right, cool. <laughs> yep. Most likely that. Like yeah. Your like, second option though, too. He's like, ah, fuck you, Eustace. You yeah. Curse is yours. <laughs> yep. Or yeah, I actually like your option too of like, yeah, you're <laughs> definitely going to die before me. So I'm going to just keep this safe keepings. No one's going to come bother you. And then mm-hmm. I'll come back for my treasure. Everyone hates you. No one, no one wants to be around you. So no one's going to steal your hat. Right. Exactly. <laughs> It's like why I buried the treasure on your land. No one comes yeah. to visit you. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, uh, before they just use this, just straight up hangs up on Horst. Horst says that he's like, I'm, this is my last warning. Like this box is bad news. Eustace hangs up. Shirley repeats her warning. And then she, for sure, being able to tap into bad vibes and stuff is like, yeah, this box is bad news. Deuces. She gets the <sighs> fuck out of there. Yeah. Like, I take credit cards. So I'll, I'll in Venmo, Squarespace. Yeah, but I'm out. Keith. Yeah, PayPal me. Okay, I'll invoice you. Bye. And Bye. she leaves ASAP. Bye. Um, and to no surprise, Eustace immediately opens the box with the key. And the room gets drenched in this like horrible green glow and these Ooh. huge like shadowy ghoulish like electrified and also like glowing green arms 
who leap from the box with this like wailing sound and they start just destroying the room in every way, shape or form. Mm. And I'd like to briefly pause just to speculate about these ghoulish arms. Um, Namely, as hinted before with curses, I think that these like ghost arms were some type of curse bestowed upon the treasure that waits inside the box uh, that just came along with whoever took the treasure. Uh, Um, But like I mentioned, horse does not give a fuck. He just wants the gold. So Mm -hmm. I think he probably just, you know, again, on some poaching adventure, heard some rumor or legend about some treasure um, or some money, you know, perhaps in the depths of the Mayan ruins in the (laughs) jungle or like some like ancient like Japanese royal lines like out on like some island in Japan yeah. something like that um but Happened as soon upon. yes something like that at the top of like some mountain or like the depths of some swamp a volcano yeah in a volcano uh <laughs> and as soon as he stole it these cursed shadowy ghoul arms that came from the ancestors of uh, whoever, like the peoples that he stole this treasure from, you know, who were created to protect the gold, um, popped out and started to destroy anyone, anything, until the treasure was returned to its rightful owner, Oof. its rightful peoples. But mm. I think because Horst was like already rich as fuck, he just like shrugged it off and was like, man, another curse, another day. I'll deal with this later. No sweat <laughs> off his back. And he just <laughs> bar- literally just buried it in the farm nonchalantly and was like, I'll deal with this curse eventually. I'm just going to my next adventure here. Um, wow. Yeah. So he's like, I think he's probably got a lot of curses under his belt, just waiting mm-hmm. buried somewhere because he's racked up enough at this point that he literally was like, man, eh, I'll get around to this one. Maybe that explains why so much creepy shit happens at I mean, their house and their probably. house alone. Like, I mean, he did grow up in it, that same house. Yeah, and if he did it for that box, like you said, he probably just did it for all of I'm sure yep. he came across a lot of cursed or like damned oh, objects yeah. and things. That like For sure. Yeah. And again, and, just like knew that no one was going to go digging around this farm. It can't, it, literally no digging on this farm because it clearly can't grow anything. I don't even know what their mm-hmm. quote unquote farm is. Yeah. They're not like tilling the land going to come up on his other treasures. They just right. like, they just sit in the ground probably. And again, horse probably was like, yeah, Eustace is going to die at some point. And then I'll come back and like get all the treasures and it deal with those be, curses yeah. and all that yeah. shit. But on to the next adventure. Yeah, type of first thing. and foremost. Wow. Yes. So, um, hilariously, I want to say that the, the arms are like grabbing at Eustace. And for a second, Courage is like trying to save Eustace and like pull him away. But the arms like are kind of swatting at him. And so Courage is just like, eh, okay. And like yeah. tosses Eustace to the arms <laughs> and then runs off to try and save Muriel. He's like, I got to pick my battles and you are not my priority. 100% understood yeah i mean like i don't think a Good single call. person watching or listening to this episode or to the actual courage episode yep. would, would disagree yeah exactly like this was a there was there was one choice courage could have made there and he made the right choice <laughs> yeah, yeah this is not like a cowardly moment this is like a oh, yeah get rid of my problem <laughs> right exactly he's moment. like oh it's two birds one stone yeah. <laughs> appease the curse make my life a little easier Three birds, technically. Save yeah. Muriel as well. Bam! Become the hero for Muriel. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, Courage is not fast enough to get to Muriel because, you know, mm. literally ghoul-cursed arms. Uh, and it, another one of the hands grabs Muriel. And as they are pulling Eustace and Muriel into the box, uh, Courage just goes and, like, gets a rope to like hold them in place which i guess is strong enough to like keep them there courage is like really good at tying knots maybe um and courage again pretty resourceful he's like you know who knows how to deal with spooky ooky things surely so he wow. runs to get shirley and like as he bursts into her place she just goes the stupid one opened the box didn't he <laughs> <laughs> and courage is like uh-huh uh-huh so she's like all right i'm gonna deal with this shit yeah yeah okay okay 
checks out by the time they get back. Uh, and this is a pretty short episode because, again, no major actual crimes. Uh, so they get back to the house. It's like falling apart left and right. Shirley is just like unfazed. She's just muttering about like what an idiot Eustace is. She just like strolls in as again, like these ghoulish shadow arms are like trying to pull like Eugene or Eustace and Mariel like into the box, like Kerr just screaming and freaking out. Shirley just like sighs, walks up to the box and just kicks it closed. <laughs> <laughs> which like snaps on the arms and like a hundred dollar bill like flies out which i'm pretty sure she just like grabs as her payment and just like walks back out yeah is that an invoice you yeah. well actually this is saving some this, paper i'll just i'll just take for my right travel yeah. wait she just kicks it i love shirley so okay. much and she yes. literally doesn't even blink an eye she's just like hmm kick like this dumbass of course you which it. also she didn't have to use any of her like spiritual or like no. psychic or media like courage could have kicked it shut muriel could have kicked it anyone shut. anyone could have kicked it shut nope. she was just like boop bye <laughs> thanks for i'll take i won't bill you instead i'll just take this hundred yes bill. i'll include this We're as even. a tip thanks very yeah. much um but eustace ever again the greedy son of a gun immediately reopens the box being like see i knew there was treasure in it oh my gosh luckily though uh the arms grab eustace courage has figured out how this box works now so he just kicks it shut too but this time the arm crap man is manages to pull eustace into the box uh mm-hmm. and then courage kicks it shut and it gets locked behind Eustace. Oh. Um, and luckily for everyone, one, this time the box is full of money, cursed money, apparently, but uh-huh. Eustace doesn't give a fuck. This whole, is the money like floating around cursed or something? It's just like it's... stacks and stacks of money. Oh, okay. um, but you can't get out from the inside, or at least not when it's locked, which again, like I said, luckily for everyone, because courage hides that key for himself for a little bit (laughs) and we just see like Eustace like kind of yelling in the box as Muriel is like on her rocking chair just knitting and watching TV and Courage is just like playing with the yo-yo just and they're talking about how they're just enjoying their their time together just for a little bit longer until they can find that darn key again and let Eustace out of there (laughs) and that's it wow unfortunately that may have been the only crime in the (laughs) <laughs> the episode right there. But, I mean, it was if I were fine, did Muriel have a defense there? The psychological I mean, abuse. <laughs> I would say, yeah, Muriel didn't know that courage, quote unquote, lost the key sure. or that she didn't know where the key was. She thought it was just lost again. Yeah. She's like, you know, as soon as I finish this scarf that I have <laughs> no need for in this hot ass in middle Kansas. of nowhere town of Kansas, <laughs> we will. Think about where we may look for the key. Yes. I will think about thinking about it, but oh after this God. episode. Courage, it's in your back pocket. Okay, what? well, that's good. Now that we know where it is, as soon as I finish this scarf. <laughs> Do we'll you want some soup? I'll make us some like, soup. Yeah, real quick. We need the okay. energy to unlock this box yeah. just in case the shadow arms. I mean, we have to again. bury it as soon as we open it. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. We well, should bury it now, and then no yeah, one knows then, no. where it is went right. honestly anyway <laughs> if that was like the last episode of courage the cowardly dog i would surmise that they just fucking it. left eustace in there yeah. the box and just called it a day that would be um, a good way to end the series i know I right the audience justice would have been quite satisfied yeah. <laughs> like the final justice happens and yeah. it's muriel and courage uh, yeah, yeah I mean, flapping like, back at Eustace. Maybe they're just messing with him. They'll get him out. That's later. Point. Yeah, maybe. So again, a very short episode, uh, mm-hmm. but I thought a fun one. So I just wanted to to tell it to introduce Shirley because um, I'm sure she will come back in our arc here. Yes, who yes. she's just a badass pretty sure she will and yeah if not yeah. if nothing else like she's yet another one of the more iconic characters yes. from this show because she does have a lot of other appearances mm-hmm. she as we saw is a total boss yeah like, love she that woman i love unblinking. seeing her summon <laughs> the spirits yeah. or whatever just the <laughs> <It's> so funny <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, a lot of, lot of great uh, true crime-esque stories with Shirley yes. involved. Exactly. Um, and that's yeah. it. Uh, cool. Between now and next week, uh, who should they, uh, who should our listeners and viewers tell about this pod? Y'all, I think it's pretty clear. You need to go get get your palms read, go get a psychic <laughs> reading, and you need to tell you tell that person whether it's just like tarot, whether mm-hmm. they go all in on the palms, whether yep. they do a whole like what is it, astrological chart? I don't all of the above those things. Go in, tell them. Love it. <laughs> I don't think they're super cheap. Not gonna lie, <laughs> but. <laughs> Tell them, check out this podcast because mm-hmm. this week it's all about them and their powers <laughs> and abilities and business model. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and I think while you're there, if you have an unsatisfying experience, you should flip it, open your own medium shop and then tell your customers Boom. when they come in be like, I see in your future, a new podcast. Saturday morning mysteries that you will listen to soon or watch. Ooh, and then learn hypnosis to too while you're at it. Yeah, to <laughs> any of that stuff to just oh get your God. new customers and your new business venture to mm-hmm. listen to Sandborn Mist. And yeah, you will like, subscribe, review, tell a friend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Great. Mm-hmm. give them money what what anyway yes <laughs> so uh, yeah i think that's it yep and we'll until uh, next week see y'all next week bye bye thanks for tuning in to saturday morning mysteries if you enjoyed this episode please share rate review leave us a like and drop a comment we post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We, we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Satmore and Mist, all the abreeds, and let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing Saturday Morning Mysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries. <laughs> <laughs>